garden, fresh and homemade meals. Uh, when I was young, I, um, I was lucky enough to go to my grandmother's, and then she, she was from the farm, so I was always used to eating farm fresh meals. Um, she, um, and one of the things that I used to do with my grandmother is, is after the meals, we would usually have tea. So that's where it all started with me, was, you know, hanging out with my grandmother, having tea with her. It was not the best quality, but at least, you know, that's kind of where it started, and that's where it got my passion. Um, I basically, here, I'm just showing basic different um, uh, processes of tea, that is, I, these are pictures that I took personally. Um, also, when I was younger, my father, he used to sell organic produce, actually, at the Green Bay's Farmer's Market in the 70s. So I'm very comfortable with that quality. Um, when I did various jobs when I was younger, I did anything from when I was 16 years old, I worked at the Summerfest and um, all the different festival grounds. It was the ye old lemonade stand. And it actually, at that time, it wasn't considered gourmet, but it would be considered under those standards because it's anything from freshly squeezed lemonade, lemons, and they use just sugar and, um, and water in it. So it would be considered gourmet at, at any standards nowadays. Um, I also worked at Obon Pan and Beans and Barley in Milwaukee. I worked at, um, was it Rodsey's here? And then the Black and Tan once it was in the uh, De Pere area. I was, seven years, I was for the uh, community, uh, Eagle Heights Community Gardens. There was a committee. It's one of the oldest and largest organic community gardens in the United States. So I was lucky enough to be able to um, be part of that. Um, as a teenager, I used to go to coffee houses because I, even though I don't personally drink coffee, um, there really wasn't too many tea houses in this area, so that's where I would drink my tea. Uh, eventually, when I moved to Seattle, um, I was experienced loose leaf tea for the first time. So I got really intrigued, and that's kind of where it really started my journey. Uh, I eventually wanted to start a Room. Yeah, of course. And that's just two leaves. I'll see them all at once. <laughs> um, and then basically after, um, that's kind of where I decided that I wanted to be fully immersed into tea. Um, I started to, I wanted to open a tea room. I eventually did, but I wanted to know, have better knowledge because I didn't want to go at, have, open a tea room and go, you know, have no knowledge when people are coming in, so I wouldn't be able to help them. Uh, so I looked around and then I found the Specialty Tea Institute. They had just started in, in 2004, and in about 2005, I started taking some of their tea classes. Um, the, I'm going to tell you a little bit about their certification because I think when people hear certified tea specialists, they're like, oh, I've actually had people like, oh, did you take like a two hour class? And it's like, well, foundations one and two, each of them were eight hours. I have taken a black teas class, which was two days, so that's two eight-hour classes. I have taken a green and white class, which is eight hours long, where uh, sensory cupping and a technology of tea, all of those were eight hours classes. The classes themselves, while you were learning, you had 30 to 40 cups of different types of teas in those things. Um, with the black teas, it was around double that because it was two days. And when also when we did the sense of the cupping class, it was probably double that because literally you are just in that class, you are developing your palate, you're doing all the different teas, and you're you know learning how the tea should uh, taste. And when you're having a dark tea, like this is what it, the quality it should be. You know, if you're having a certain Pu'er tea, this is the quality. If you're having, you know, a, a silver needle, this is what the quality should be. Um, so I had learned all this. Um, I had learned from people who had literally had tea estates for several generations in the different countries, and I was able, I was lucky enough to be able to have teas. Um, that were not available in the United States, that are actually not available domestic, um, outside of the domestic market that are the country that they came from. So I was lucky enough to be able to taste those teas themselves. Um, so basically that's kind of where my passion is. And then um, through you know, having those connections um, with the tea um, estates, that's how I developed and was able to 
get teas direct. So that's kind of what I do is, is I get my teas direct from the farms themselves. I try to focus on it being as fair trade as possible, um, as organic as possible. And you know, I also have, I get industry updates where people are telling, you know, um, different certifications they're doing. There's an elephant one that's happening in, I think it's in Nepal or India, where they're basically, well actually it's in the Assam, Dijon, um, Darjeeling area, where they're trying to get it, where they're trying to do eco-friendly um, tea. So, because there is like um, elephants that sometimes come into the um, farms, so they want to try to find a way of having the farms exist and having the nature exist. So there's, that's a new certification that was probably only a couple months ago that they're doing. So I, I'm able to keep up on the updates on that. So here's my tea flower that I took when I was at the tea estate. So um, that's I guess.